Okay, hi everyone. It's Jeffrey again from Rubik's Academy. Very, very nice to meet all of you. Uh, today, I'm going to do a sort of not livestock analysis. Today, I'm going to do Forex analysis, okay? Because I receive a lot of requests and inquiries asking me to go through a bit of Forex instead of company shares all the time. Uh, I understand because usually when we talk about trading, Forex is much, what I say, much more convenient to trade rather than shares because number one shares they are trading hours number two the volatility and the liquidity of shares is nothing compared to forex but we have to understand that it's a double-edged sword when something is more volatile when there's more liquidity it also means that you are more likely to lose the trade right uh, you are more likely to quicker more quicker lose the, more quickly lose the trade but in any case it's all right uh, i shall answer those inquiries and i think i should because a lot of you don't know what is the top process for analyzing a forex pair or some of you may have certain technical indicators that you want to use you feel that all oh, this technical indicator is the best i don't know i'm just going to share with you how i think when i look at these pairs okay whether you think my thinking is sophisticated enough or it's not sophisticated enough i'm not sure but for now i will just go through with you how i think when I want to process a trade, how I think when I look at these pairs, okay? Now, number one, first, most important thing, when I, if I ever do trade Forex, if I ever do even think about analyzing Forex pairs, there's only three pairs that I do, okay? And these are what we call the big three, the major three, all right? Euro USD, which is this, all right? The USD Japan Yen, which is this, and then there is the pound against the USD. Uh, the reason why I say this is because these three pairs usually have what we call fixed spreads. All right, fixed spreads. And when I say fixed, it's fixed across almost all the brokerages. Not just fixed because it doesn't change. <laughs> okay, yes, it's fixed in both senses of the word. It is fixed because it doesn't change. But more importantly, it is fixed across all the brokerages. And number three, these three pairs offer the lowest spread. Okay, the spread is basically your transaction cost. When you trade, there's a transaction cost because the broker needs to earn money. All right, so there's a transaction cost. And the transaction cost is called the spread. It's the difference between your ask and bid price. The price that you are willing to buy and the price that they are willing to sell. All right, there's a difference in price between that. Okay, so. Today we will just look at forex pair. We will be looking at these three pairs. Uh, I am not a forex specialist, but I do do a lot of technical analysis for even the shares that I trade and I invest in. So I'm just going to apply the same thought process to these three pairs. Okay. Of course, the resources that we will be using is a bit different because it's forex. Uh, the other good thing about trading forex is that you have a lot of news available to you. So in, as for everything in life, that's good and bad. There are two sides of the same coin, okay? Now, so let's look at the first pair, the pound against the USD, okay? Whenever I look at Forex, I always want to go to the long-term view first. It's the same exact thinking process that I have for shares. You look at the all-time chart. So where is this pair going? You can see that it's definitely on a downtrend. It's definitely on a downtrend, okay? Number two is, you can see it's neither in the overbought or oversold zone. So there is no clear indication there as to whether this pair is going either way. Number three is I use my ADX. You can see that it just, the previous trend just died. Okay, whatever trend it was, it just died. And now it's starting to pick up again. It's trying to pick up. So the previous trend was a bear trend. It died. That bear trend died. That bear trend lost its strength. And now it's trying to pick up strength again. Okay. Uh, of course, whether this is the bulls picking up or the bears picking up, we don't know. We do not know. Okay. Because remember, ADX doesn't give you the direction. I know it's called average directional index, but it doesn't give you the direction. It just gives you the strength of the trend. It's a bit mouthful, strength, trend. But yeah, that only gives you the trend strength. It doesn't give you the direction. So honestly, for this pair, I'm going to avoid because there is nothing indicative. But let's go into a smaller time frame. Maybe we get some clues from there. But on the bigger time frame, I don't see anything that I 
interested in or anything that gets me excited. So let's go to the smaller time frame. I only use three months and five years uh, and, and the all time frame for uh, trading view. I don't use any other time frame. Okay, so this is the three months time frame. All right. Now, looking at this, it makes me a little bit more excited because I can see that there is a what we call a parallel channel. All right, a, a symmetrical channel, channel that's forming. All right, and the channel is obviously between here, which will form its resistance. The price of 1.2647, which means one pound gets you 1.2647 USD. All right. And the support is obviously around here. There's a few supports, okay? This is another support. Okay, so there, so when these two support levels are so close, they are no longer a level. I call it a support zone. So what you want to do is you want to highlight the zone. This is the zone. This is the zone right here. Okay? Support zone. That's the support zone right there. Resistance, there's only one clear resistance, so you can leave the level there. But you should also be highlighting it because when you go into a trade, it's never a specific price level. It's always a zone. Okay? It's always a zone. Now, the reason why we have a zone is because you always want to give yourself some uh, yourself a little bit of space to exercise the price level that you want to go in at. You don't want to confine yourself to just one level. You need to look at a range. Okay, now the next thing is this. So you can see that the current price level is pretty close to the support zone. Okay, it's pretty close to the support zone. Honestly, on the on the side of relative strength index and ADX, it's not showing anything, right? On ADX, a bit more telling because you can see that the current trend strength is starting to wane, starting to wane. Okay, and the trend before that was a bear trend. So there it is a bit more positive. Like, that means it is a bit more indicative towards a renewed bullish momentum or short-term bullish momentum. But it's anybody's guess. Okay. So let's say we work with this. We work with the fact that we have spotted a support zone right here. Now what should we do? The next thing you need to do is to go to this thing called Forex Factory. Okay, as you can see, number one, it's very important that you actually, I'm sure you can see my pointer, my mouse, my cursor, pointing at the time 519 p.m. It corresponds with my own time, which is 528. All right, just need a refresh for you to go to 528. Okay, so now it corresponds. Remember, p.m. to p.m., numbers to numbers. Okay, because you want the calendar to be on the same timing as your computer, as your local timing, because it means that you can you can you don't need to do any more attract uh, additions or subtractions from all the timings you see here. You can just take it as it is. That means all the timings that you see here are all local timings. Okay, so let's go ahead and look for some power news. Is there any important power news that's coming up? So today on Thursday. All right, uh, 2 p.m. just now, there was already the monetary policy report. That is the official bank rate. So all these news has already been released. But you must remember, at 5.29 p.m. Singapore time, it is not the U.S. market yet. U.S. market starts from about 9.30 p.m. Singapore time, plus minus one hour because of daylight savings. But as of now, it's 9.30 p.m. Okay, now, the U.S. market hasn't opened. So... The power against the USD hasn't factored in the US market. So you don't know where it's going to go. Okay? Since all this important news has come out, okay, today on May 7, what you want to do is again wait for the US market to open. And then you start looking at this chart again to see where it might go. All right? But let's say if it does come down because the US market has factored in this particular price movement. If it's going to come down, you have to understand that it's coming down because of a very important news, which is the official bank rate votes and the monetary policy report. 
and the official bank rate. If the market reacts to such a news and it's an important piece of news, it probably will be breaking these support levels. All right, but nothing's for sure. So when it does touch this level, touch these levels, you have to see what time is it? Is it close to the start of the US market? Is it at the end of the US market? What time is it? If it's near the end, and you can see from the candlestick formations that dojis are starting to form. Your, uh, all those uh, reversal candlestick patterns are starting to form. Okay, your engulfing candlesticks, your dojis, all right, your hammer, all that, all those reversal patterns are starting to form. Maybe it means that the market has already priced in all these news releases. So it really depends how the market reacts. Okay, but let's say there's a doji here, or even here, if it's here, even better. What you can do is, you can set your stop loss around here. Okay. This should be your stop loss. entry level, then your profit zone will be around here. Okay, right all the way, your profit zone will be all the way until we hit the resistance zone. Hit the profit zone. All right all the way until you hit the resistance zone. Okay, so you can see in this case, it's a very good risk to reward ratio again. Uh, if in the long term, you sustain good risk to reward ratio for all your trades, you are most likely gonna be profitable. All right, okay. So that is it for me today. All right, uh, today is the 7th of May, but I may be releasing this video only on the 8th. So if you're watching this on the 8th, you can observe for yourself, you can monitor for yourself whether you are still able to go in. All right, but this is my personal prediction. But uh, honestly, even today, I'm gonna put this, put this signal on our Facebook page. So if you're watching this video, you can go back to our Facebook page. You, have, you would have seen this trade up here. All right, you would have seen this trade up here, okay? Whether you take it or not, it depends on whether you are following our Facebook page. If you are following our Facebook page, you would have seen this straight up here even before this video. Okay, so that's all for me today. Uh, we don't have time anymore to go to another pair. Maybe in the next video, I will make the I will do up the analysis for another pair. But for today, it's just power against the USD. All right. So thank you very much. I look forward to making another video for you guys. Thanks.